still changing um, on mental health grounds. Um, the name is H. Kwame Afaglo. Um, we've done a couple of videos already, in the third out of seven, and it's on mental health and caging and shackling. Today's topic is about the types of mental health, the symptoms we should watch out for, and how it's treated. Now, it's still changed. The name is still changed. Still changed in because of mental health. Um, there are various types and causes of mental health depending on the intensity some could be mild moderate or severe it could be genetic it could be environmental it could be stresses so then if it's genetic it presupposes that it's solely genetic but it's not always the case it could be genetic and environmental if that be the case we would have to relook at um the genetic one under persons with disability which in recent times are learned is called abled differently so let's look at some of envir some environmental causes of um, mental health one of them is fear what you would hear as phobia but fear we have to recategorize it is if, if it's intense that's what we're saying everybody fears more likely we'll fear darkness we'll fear danger yes but then if it becomes intense if it's uh, repeated or if under what we call phobia if the imagination of the threat is more intense than the threat itself, then it becomes phobic. That's what we call the fear under mental health or mental ill health, mental disorder. One of the common ones is social anxiety or social fear. Where it simply means that um, the individual is being singled out in a group or a crowd for humiliation. When you humiliate an individual in crowd, you make him or her lose face. I mean, let's look at children when they go to school and then a teacher tends to be uh, to single him or her out and ridiculing him for one reason or the other. That child weeps, likely to weep and not wanting to go back to school. That is severe. That is severe. Because that teacher in primary school will be the main teacher for that child. So anytime he or she goes to school, he would have to face that teacher. And that teacher, ha having humiliated him, would keep ruminating him and so the child will not like going to school. The other one for um, middle adulthood and then maybe ad early adulthood or teenagers would be bullying. When you bully people in school, then they associate you with bullying, and especially if it's boarding school, then it creates some fear. And if it's repeated, where the image or the name, when they mention the name of the one causing that fear alone, is more scary and dreaded than the person in the, than seeing the person so then some teachers can be just bullies they can threaten you to the extent that just hearing their name or the footsteps of them coming if they if if you have to meet them every day it tends to be more of a what a scary a social anxiety a social fear at workplaces for we adults you could have a boss who is more of a bully any time from the very first day you started work they didn't like you and so they'll send this fear into you and then they'll humiliate you among other staff the more they keep humiliating you the less enjoyable the work is and the more likely you are to leave employment you'll be quickly looking for a, a different job once this repeated and it becomes intense then it's likely that like the child who weeps like the teenager who wants to stop school or the child who stops school because of um, bullying or humiliation social anxiety or social fear this adult is also likely to what stop working or may fight back some people become so aggressive they may fight back and it could be it comes with several symptoms one is that just the sight of that stressor will make the person or sweat then tremble some people tremble they just tremble tremble some people can have breath or they can even choke on just the sight, the imagination of the stressor or the threat just the imagination can make somebody choke or have cardiac arrest it could even lead to nausea dizziness and fainting and stuff like that we need to be careful when such stresses are before us it could be social stress once you enter space and then you have no place of exit which you call agoraphobia it's also another um fear phobic phobia that has to be looked at some people just cannot use flight plane they just fear flying yes some people cannot go by height Acrophobia. they just don't like going by height those are fears or anxieties that are all mental disorders mental illness that we have to because just the sight or the sight or even 
hearing of the person coming, the stressor coming, the person can just start shaking or sweating unnecessarily and even behaving in irrational ways. That is mental health and that has to be looked at. What are some of the treatments? We've gone quite far. One of it is the simplest is, 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 is the simplest treatment is if the stressor, if the anxiety is mild, just avoid that stressor. Avoid the cause of anxiety. Alternatively, if it's moderate and repeated or severe, then go see a psychologist or a psychiatrist. The other one is going through exercise, which you call yoga exercise, not the spiritual yoga, but yoga exercises. It makes one control his or her what? sympathetic nerves. Once we can control our sympathetic nerves, we can then control phobia. The name is H. Kwame Afaglu. Thank you.